All right, how's it guys? Welcome to Reptile Garden. Um, we're gonna do another cage redo in this video. We're gonna be moving a fertilance onto display. So this is one of the first cages you'll see as you come into our reptile park. Just below we've got a neotropical rattlesnake, Gratalus simus, absolute beast. So because they're from the same region, I feel this might be a nice cage to pop this one into. We were gonna put a Cape Cobra in here but we're thinking about moving the Cape Cobra in place of uh, our Chinese Cobra. So we're gonna, in this video, we're just gonna cover a bit about how to do a bioactive substrate and what all goes into it. And then we're gonna decor and make it all nice, pop the snake in here. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so here we are inside the cage. Uh, we've got our probe and stop basking light here, but we're gonna change things up here a bit. And then we've got our LED lights or visual light. Here you guys can see, this is um, just uh, to check the drainage, where the water level is. You can see there's like little holes over here, so that the water will fill up and we can see exactly what the water level is doing. So that's just like an inspection cap. Now this enclosure, we've just varnished the sides and it, from here down it's pool coated. Um, in our other video, where we move our snouted cobra that used to be in this enclosure. We covered how good this stuff really is. This is pool coat. So you can see the fiberglass was put in here up to this level and then we pool coated it. So it's totally smooth, water can't get through and there was about eight years worth time of muck sitting in here and the wood underneath is still perfect. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a drainage layer. So I'm just going to get these clay lacquer over here. Okay, so this is the lacquer. This is little clay balls. They're very light and aerated. And that gives a lot of space for bioactivity to grow on. Okay, so all our water that is going to get added eventually is going to come down and we'll have a water layer here. Very good for humidity and having that life inside these enclosures. So I just, um, I've had this bag for quite a long time. So what I did is I put it in this drum and I put boiling water all over it. It hasn't ever been used, but you can see there's a bit of other bits and pieces in here. It was next to the basin where we clean a lot of other snake um, water bowls and stuff. So we just wanted to make sure that we sterilize it from anything like that. But the bioactivity is gonna take care of it anyway. Okay, so we're gonna just dump a whole lot of it in here to get a nice layer. Okay, let's hope it's not too much, but it is just one 30 liter bag. And this enclosure is 1.8 meters by 600. Oh, it's nice and warm. Okay, so that's that's quite a nice level. That should work just perfectly. We might take a little bit out because it's getting quite high up and we might still want to do plants and things like that. Uh, let's have a look see. It is also over time, so it could slightly shift any vibration. These balls are going to find their way into each other. So then it's going to compact down a bit. So that's why we're just moving it around a lot like this now. So we can get it really well packed. That's as sort of far as it's going. That's pretty good drainage level. I mean, you can always get away with half of that. As I say, I do want some space for maybe planting something. We've got quite a lot of space for planting though. Whether or not you go in a pot or straight into the ground. If we go straight into the ground, then that I'd say that's fine. 
Okay, yeah, so I think we'll be all right. So the drainage layer is nice and level. Then we need something to separate the soil from this medium. So we've got this here, which is called Bidum. It's also known as Weed Guard. I already made a template of this, cut to size. So it's much easier to do it on the base of the cage than over all of these things and what have you. So you want it coming up the sides just a little bit so that when you pack everything, it keeps the material nice and tight against you. So you don't get sand and dirt and stuff getting in between your drainage layer. So you can see I made a little star open spot here, which is gonna go around the drainage cap. Okay, so you just pop that on there and then lay it out nice. Yeah, so as I say, you want it to go up the sides a little bit. It's all going to get covered with the dirt that we're going to throw in here. And then hopefully you don't have a snake that wants to dig too much because they can potentially dig and go underneath this. If you want to spend a little more time in securing it, you could um, silicone it in. And now you've got to wait for that to dry because the silicone has got quite a heavy fumes. But you could use something like marine silicone, like they use for fish tanks. Which will work quite nicely, they won't be able to ever sort of get back through there. But when you do want to do a change one day, which you won't really need to, unless in our case, like a park, we need to cycle our animals now and again for display purposes. Or if something passes away, you want to do a sort of fresh restart. Well, I like to anyway, make sure that you disinfect everything extremely well. So that's why I'm just putting it in like this. And a fertilance is not really a, much of a burrowing snake. So I don't think we're gonna have issues. And the only snake that has given me a problem was the snouted cobra. She loves to dig and go everywhere. So we put her just on dirt. She can just have a muddy bottom in the cage because she'll just dig down and just mess everything up anyway. I think even if I did silicone the side, she'll dig through, <laughs> through the stuff eventually. She's one crazy snake. She just wants to eat all the time. And when she doesn't get her food, then she goes digging. And if we feed her all the time, she gets fat, obese, and she'll die. So we just feed her smaller meals when we see she's getting a little on edge. Okay, so we've got this layer in nice. It's not all nice, neat fold and whatever, but we're gonna use the soil to pack it in nicely. Okay, so the next step. I recently got this mix, and this is really, really good stuff. Kind of fall over there a bit we don't want that yet but it caught most of it okay okay so this here is 100 percent decomposing bark so it's 100 percent organic already starting it's already got all that bioactivity you would want in it and that takes care of most harmful bacteria and things like that so what we want to do, we've got a, I've got another bag which has also got quite a lot of bark in it. And that's, that's going to give it a really nice mix in the end. So you want something that's very light and fluffy. It doesn't get too compacted and hard. Even if I do compact it, it breaks up quite easily. So you want very, very airy, fluffy substrate. And when it makes clumps like this, this is often a good sign as well of good bioactivity. Okay, so I think we're gonna just add this one bag and then we just smooth it out. I'll give it a little bit of a compacting, especially as a bottom layer. It's gonna have a lot of weight on it. Everything is gonna drop over time. Now, as things start decomposing, the level drops down as well. 
So we just push it up against the sides as you can see here and then it closes it off nicely so that we don't get a whole lot of dirt that can fall down into the enclosure. Okay, we just pack it in nicely and there are a few little hojas in here that I have seen but those are all good cage cleaners. I think we've got some earwigs, well, that's a common name for them. I'm not too clued up on insects and stuff, so on their scientific names and all of that. Okay, so we're gonna add a bit more so we can finish off this section. And then we're gonna add some other mixes into here as well. Okay, so some potting soil can also be added in here, but the other bag we've got is gonna do that quite nicely. So we're just gonna add a bit more of this one. So, I mean, this is literally like the forest floor over many years because this is all decomposing, like all the bark that's falling off the trees and the leaves. This makes up a forest floor, especially a certain layer. And then you get a lot of your soils and things. Depends how windy it is. I'll also bring in sand, but it's a lot of decomposing matter. Okay, so this is 100% organic. You wanna make sure you only use 100% organic products. You don't wanna use anything that could have fertilizers or pesticides or anything like that in it as well. All right, so you also want a really good pH in this stuff and this stuff is tested this is used in potting soil for plants and everything so it's exactly what we want all right okay so i want to get another bag of stuff quickly and pop that in here as well right so we just added this bark mix this bark mix has got quite a bit more soil in it but it's also decomposing bark very very much the same thing a little bit of string or something in there and what we're going to add to this we're going to add some vermiculite okay so this is this is our vermiculite okay Okay, so this is an extremely fine grade of vermiculite because I don't like using the chunky stuff in the substrate because when it sits on top of the substrate, you get these big chunks. It just looks, I don't know, it looks unnatural to me. So this we're gonna mix in quite nicely. I'm just gonna spread it out. And this also helps keeping the soil nice, light and fluffy. Okay. So it's very important, it's great for roots to grow and be able to breathe for your plants. It's good for oxygenation, for the bacteria to grow. And we remember whenever we're mentioning bacteria that we want to grow, it's that healthy bacteria that breaks down everything. I once did a fish pond and the guys who specialize with the fish and uh, DIY bio filters, they recommend taking a nice fresh cow patty and mixing it into, into the filter or putting it on top of the filter and that will immediately start the bioactivity in that filter. Okay. Don't try any other kind of poop though. It's not gonna be as good. <laughs> you get the opposite effect. Okay, so you can see what sort of mix we're getting here. We're still gonna be adding quite a lot of other things. You don't want it too much gold speckling in it, but we're gonna still add quite a lot of other things and blend that all together. So we've still got quite a ways to go here. I think we can even add more. It's actually taking quite a lot because obviously we don't want a nice 
I mean a huge dip here we want to fill it up almost level to this lip so I think we're gonna have to go and add some more and we also can add other things as well yeah we definitely need to add more so we adding some peat so this is like you get your palm peat it's pretty much the base of the palm leaves you know that people trim all the time of the tree and it's all ground up there's quite a lot of fiber in this one you see if it if you had to actually sieve this one you would end up with a little tufts but this is all good for keeping it nice and fluffy so we're going to break this up this one has already been got a bit wet that's why it's swollen like this normally you have to add a lot of water but we can add the water later over all of this and then go with a bit more of a dry surface we don't want to have too much moisture going on especially if you don't have good enough ventilation so your top layer can be a bit drier but on our little well on our cages on these small vents here we've got a little computer fan and that takes out the moist uh, the, that sort of really humid air every few hours or so it runs for like 15 minute cycles gives a good air change because ventilation is extremely important in any setup with reptiles oh, there's a lot of fiber in this stuff so this is uh, here you can see it when it's nice and wet really really nice stuff but this is a this is a mix with the fiber so sometimes it's nice not to have that fiber because it does clump up a bit and you're going to sit in there and Takes so much time just to break up a little clump. I'm going to be here forever. We'll speed up those parts if we need to. Doing something like this when it's very dusty, always important to have a mask on. Nowadays, we're all living with a mask on. Okay. I think I'm going to remove bulk of this fluffy stuff though. It's a pain. okay so i'm coming to the conclusion here that i should have been a little more prepared for this video and the peat should have been wet then you don't have to deal with the dust and i could have also mixed everything together and told you guys that it's my special formula but then what's the point of the video i'm trying to show everyone how to do a bioactive system for your animals so you guys need to know what goes into a bio mix i mean it's you get a lot of people got different mixes and things like that but it's just good to know what options you have and what should be in there okay so we're gonna go with more of the moist bark that wonderful mix and a little bit more vermiculite okay now it might look like I'm doing layers here but I just want to see how much substrate we've actually got in here nice thing about doing it this way as well is you have the exact amount you need you don't end up with a whole lot of waste not that it will be waste you can always store it or when you're topping up some other enclosures or anything like that okay so we're getting pretty good to the level just make sure oh what have i done thought of this earlier that i mustn't bury the probe and then i'm gonna bury the probe all right but there we go quick fix okay all right so we're gonna try and mix everything oh look at that dryness there i'm gonna see what we end up with how it looks and then i've got a few other things that i want to add in here 
as well as moisture. Oh gosh, the stuff gets past my glasses into my eyes and it's just caking up. Horrible breaking up husk and peat and everything like that. Okay, so this mix is a bit dry. I do want to add some more moisture. So we're going to give our babies only the best. No, I'm joking. This is just the bottle. But we do have really good water filtration on the property. We've got a reverse osmosis system here at the Stodals branch that feeds for all the plants and everything like that. So we're lucky we've got such good quality water. No chlorine straight from the earth. Really nice. Okay, so we're just going to get a couple bottles in here. Right, so now we've got about 20 litres of water in this enclosure, which I think it could take more. But the thing is, you can always add, you can never take back. Obviously, because this is very absorbent, a lot of the moisture is going to be sitting up here. And then you can see it's dry there. It doesn't even make it all the way to the bottom. So we can still fill it up from the base to get some water in there. But that's cool now. It's a one of those blocks pretty much will absorb about 20 liters of water or so okay so now we're going to work on our sort of final top layer which is going to be a little more of a dry mix but we're going to mix it in with this as well we'll maybe put the fans on a little more just so that we don't get too humid we're always here to monitor it so it's not a problem okay so we're going to add some leaves leaf litter uh, we did treat this so that there won't be any life in here because the leaves were just picked up willy-nilly anywhere but I mean again it's also pretty much just organic waste and this is what all the little hokas are going to eat We just put these leaves through a, a mulching machine so you can see a lot of the stalks and stuff here. But what I can also do is get rid of more of the stalky stuff just by giving it a little rake. Whereas if we're selling a product, bioactive product mix, all the hard work has been done. You guys will just need to take it and throw it into your enclosures. But I mean all of this kind of stuff is normal in the forest floor and so on so it's not really a problem but yeah you know, the sticks are kind of I don't know they kind of turn me off a little bit all right then other things you can add is moss okay so we're gonna mix a whole lot of moss in here as well And then we've got another bark, which is much higher quality bark. Well, shall I say fresh bark? Which will just make the surface look a little better. Okay, so we're just going to mix all this together, it's going to make a little bit of a drier top, oh it's going to be such a nice blend. So you can really get different looks and feels of your enclosure with what you add. This moss is quite green, it does stand out quite a bit.
And you can always pull a little more from below. Get it looking really cool. Alright, so that's pretty much our base mix all sorted. There's one more not so nice job to do, that is to clean the glass. And then the fun begins with decorating. Okay, so we've just put this branch in. Always want to make sure things are nice and stable. Snake is very light, so it shouldn't be a problem with moving this at all. Because you don't want something that can move and it can get crushed. And then this rock here, it's just a fiberglass rock. It looks really good. It is hollow, so I mean the snake could dig and go underneath it. But as I say, I don't think it's much of a digger. So we should be fine there as well. And if we are using solid rocks, you want to make sure that they're in contact with a hard ground or surface. Because once they start digging underneath, it could roll over and actually crush them. So we make sure that the branch is all nice and secure. So if anything digs under here, nothing drops on it. Okay, cool. And also the soil is very soft. So if this does drop on it, the logs lock very soft and everything. The snake will probably just get indented a little bit and it can still squirm through. But that is just something to really be careful of. Nothing too heavy on the soil that they can dig under and then it can collapse on top of them. Okay, so we're gonna start decorating a little bit more, get a nice hide in here, get the water bowl, and obviously all the little plants and things like that, and see what we end up with. All right guys, so that might have looked uh, really quick, but that was actually quite a bit of time to get everything in the right place where I wanted it. Um, I pretty much knew exactly where I wanted to place things already before I started. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, we're gonna take a closer look at it. We're gonna put the snake back in now. Um, one thing I just did is I put in a heat projector and our heat projector is controlled with a dimmerstat that slowly controls the temperature rather than a typical thermostat on and off. And we can set a day and a night temperature and we can fit a timer for the lights and everything like that. So we're gonna put the snake back in. Hopefully everything goes nice and smooth. It's a pretty crazy snake. Um, out of all the species I've ever kept, they're one of the most hectic snakes and pretty much keep you on your toes a lot of the time. So they they move fast, they got heat pits. It's, it's just a scary snake when they are all jittery and on the go, rattling their tail. So she is really on edge. She's in a tub at the moment. I'm just going to pop her in here quickly and then we'll check out this enclosure nice and close. Cool, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, there'll be a lot more content coming in time. I try my best um, to get to these videos when I'm extremely busy. A lot of things and projects going on, so we do get to it when we can. So yeah, let's just have a look and end off with the beautiful snake in its enclosure.